There's a lot on the line coming into this week six battle as one team will emerge as the Colonial League frontrunner and have the upper hand in the District 11 class. In 2009, the Blue Eagles and the Rovers met here at Cottingham Stadium twice. The Pirates may be young and inexperienced, but they're determined. Last season when Caddy and Southern Lehigh met week one, the Spartans might have won in the stats. The Pirates offense only managed to put 10 points on the board between the two contests. The undefeated Vikings look to continue their perfect season. Every young ball player has a dream. A dream of one day making it to the big leagues. But these guys are just doing what they love best, and that's playing baseball. Down to the field, Kristen Mayer. Thanks, Al. Jim Morgan said he likes what he's seeing after last week's loss to Easton. He said his offensive line is playing a lot better, and he said any time you can give Andre Williams the ball and let him go, that's always a good thing. He's confident coming into the second half. Rob Miloski is also pleased with the way his offense has been able to move the ball. He said obviously that INT in the end zone did hurt them, but he likes the drive and the determination that his kids showed by coming back and scoring a touchdown right after that. But I think he's starting to really feel the excitement of this game and what it's like to be back here on this field. He looked at me and said, big game, this is great. Down to the field we go and a very warm Kristen Mayer. I don't know how warm, but Al, I got a chance to talk to Coach Bottolari coming out of the locker room, and he said the Easton offense is getting too many yards after first contact against his defense. He wants his guys to do a better job of wrapping up and tackling. He said a few times his defense had them stopped, and the Easton backs did a great job getting off the ball, and he said that's just not acceptable. Offensively, he said they need to sustain drives, they can have penalties, they can have tackles for losses, they need to do a better job of moving down the field, putting the ball in the end zone. He said his kids are playing well, they just need to play better. I always knew I'd be a good quarterback. Watch out, McNabb. At Lehigh University at the Gatorade Camp, Kristen Mayer, two sports. Al, I'm down here with the two Rover mascots. This is Newman right here, he's 10 months. He likes to play with the football when he's down here. And this is Chance, who's five years old. There's been a Rover on this sideline, a live mascot for every game besides six years in Easton history. So this is a tradition here. And you know what, I probably shouldn't say this, but they told me that Easton always wins if the dogs end up going to the bathroom on the field over here. They haven't done that yet though tonight. So we'll have to see what happens. Oh, yeah, you, keep, you keep an eye on that. Welcome to the third annual Final Destination, the world's best. I'm John Michael de Havilland. And I'm Kristen Mayer. Also joining us is Katie Mulcahy. We're here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where every level of all-star cheer and dance team will be competing for the title of the world's best. New to the competition this year and also vying for this very prestigious title, our recreation cheer team. The competitors have worked hard all season long and attended one of our many outstanding qualifier events to earn the right to be here today. During the next hour, you will see the most elite cheerleading and dance programs from across the nation. You don't want to miss the action. The excitement starts now. Welcome to Down to the Field and Kristen Mayer. Thanks, uh, Coach. You couldn't have expected anything different. You said the last couple of years it has been a battle. You wanted to score one more point than they did. Well, you scored six. How exactly. does it feel to remain on the field? It feels great. It feels great. These kids played their hearts out. Uh, we, we just challenged them to half them. Again, what kind of character do we have? Of course, you have to shrink your roster now to 53 people by tomorrow. Do you feel confident now? Are you ready to make that decision, or are you still questioning a couple players? Well, I'm looking at some talent out here just in case I have to you know, add a few guys, but we're getting, we're in the process of doing that, and uh, I'll sneak back tomorrow after uh, the freshman team plays and the junior varsity team plays, and, uh, and, and Tom Eckert and I will cut it down. As if there wasn't enough hype already surrounding the Easton Phillipsburg Gatorade replay game, the Manning brothers added to the excitement. The NFL quarterback served as honorary captains, Peyton for Easton and Eli for Peeber. Peyton and I are just trying to root on our team, help out the guys. You know, I, after our first possession, I said, I don't have to help these guys. They got to figure it out. You know, they went down. Uh, I, like, I like their game plan. They went right after him from the get-go, spread him out, throwing it every down. Both Manning brothers were impressed with the passing performance of Peabird quarterback Keith Coleman. But what really left them speechless was the sellout crowd of over 14,000. I've never seen this many people for a high school football game. I mean, if we got 1,000 a thousand people to my high school football yeah, game, that was a big one. Being a part of this brings back memories of the Manning's high school football days. And even though both brothers still play football, Peyton is the same age as most of these players and understands exactly how long it's been since they've worn their high school uniform. What's impressive is how hard these guys have trained for three months now, getting themselves in shape, uh, working out, just hydrating, getting ready to play. So I think it's just a unique opportunity for these two teams. Both brothers couldn't help but get caught up in the excitement of this rivalry the oldest in the country. Being in the locker room before the game, 
was really cool. I felt just like I was back in high school or even before a Colts game. You could feel the adrenaline, just a great atmosphere, and uh, just proud to be a part of it. And being a part of it made the Mannings anxious to get back on the field themselves. They both agree the upcoming NFL season can't come quick enough. At Lafayette College, I'm Kristen Mayer for Two Sports. Steve Opinovichis is enjoying his second season as Boston College's starting kicker. His Lithuanian last name is 11 letters long and almost impossible to pronounce, which is why he's earned the nickname Sid Vicious. But regardless of what name you call him by, Opinovichis is having a blast playing on a team that was ranked number two in the country earlier this season. It's pretty unbelievable, something you know we never expected. Uh, going into this year, we, know we'd, we knew we'd have a good team, but I mean to be number two in the country and especially coming from the background that I did playing soccer and baseball. You know, being on the number two team in the country is just unbelievable. Apinovichis was a two-sport athlete in high school, but never played football. Then his kicking ability was discovered, and he was invited to join the Eagles as a walk-on. It was really just luck. Um, I was kicking field goals for fun in the stadium. Uh, it was my freshman year, uh, about the first day of class, and the coach saw me and said they can use an extra kicker. So, I don't know, the rest is history, I guess. The rest is most definitely history. Apinovichis made his kicking debut the following season and delivered a perfect performance on national TV. He went on to earn the job of BC's starting kicker and was awarded a full scholarship. But aside from his unexpected success, he's just happy to continue his athletic career at the collegiate level. Being part of a team was something that I really missed and uh, this has really given me that opportunity to obviously be a part of a team and, and experience some pretty incredible things. And there are incredible things yet to come as Apinovichis still has his senior season to look forward to. From the Lehigh Valley to Boston College, I'm Kristen Mayer for Two Sports. Larry Holmes is one of the greatest heavyweight fighters of all time. And now he's sharing his fighting techniques with Vaisa Gehema, who has agreed to fight former baseball star Jose Canseco. I'm honored that he's chosen me to come way here, especially living down there in Philadelphia. We've got a whole bunch of fighters down there. Sikahema had never met Holmes, but called to ask for help. Now he can't believe he's training with the former heavyweight champ. For a kid who grew up in the 70s and followed the fight game, boxed as I did, to be in Larry Holmes' gym and in the ring with him, he threw a better jab than anybody in any division in any time in the history of boxing. So to come up here and learn from somebody who's the size of the guy that I'm going to fight was really critical. Canseco is bigger at 6'4", 250 pounds, while Sikahema is 5'9", and weighs in around 200. But Sikahema thinks his solid muscle and boxing experience will be an advantage. My father was a boxer in the islands where we grew up, in the South Pacific. And we immigrated to the States because he wanted to train me to fight first in the Olympics and then later to turn professional. But instead, Sikahema went on to play football in the NFL, most notably with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now he's the sports director at NBC10 and started training over a month ago to get back in shape. Word got out that he was sparring and he found himself back in the ring. And now he's getting advice from Larry Holmes, who thinks he's ready for this fight. He's going to go out and he's going to win. I know he's going to win because of the determination that I see that he got. I will take him out in the third round. It'll be over. So get in your seats early. In Easton, I'm Kristen Mayer for Two Sports.